Hi, this is Natalie. Thank you for listening to Crossroads Church, where we are bringing a real God to real people. I believe you'll be inspired by today's message. Good morning, Crossroads. My name is Marcus, the lead pastor here. Pastor Joel will be back next Sunday, getting ready to preach some other wise stuff from the book of Proverbs. So we are in a series entitled Live Wise. We're taking power principles from uh, the book of Proverbs and just kind of applying them you know, sharing them with you, that things that have helped us in our lives. But before we get started with this morning's message, we're going to be in Proverbs again, if you have your Bible. You also, you can scan that code right there in the back of your chair, and there are some notes there that you can take home. I encourage you to take those home, because you can read and you can write some of these things during the week. But next week, we have, our group started already, so if you're not involved in a group, I uh, really encourage you to get involved in community. Uh, usually, if the enemy wants to prey on anyone, it's going to be he's going to be preying on individuals who have isolated themselves. They're by themselves and not done anything. And so I encourage you to overcome the fear and engage and be a part of a community group somewhere in our community, in our city or other cities. Uh, also, uh, next week, we do bat- water baptism. So if you're wanting to take the next step of faith, I encourage you out of obedience to go and get water baptized. We will dunk you. We will put you under and keep you under. Depends on how much sin you got. No, I'm just kidding. We would just be a blessing to you. I think people would experience just a great, a great time. And then uh, lastly, um, recharge. During the week on Wednesday nights, wondering what we do here, uh, Pastor Joel, I mean, Jeremiah comes in and we just do a, an hour of devotion and worship and prayer and scripture reading. There's really not an, an agenda or format. We just pray and, and seek, seek the Lord and we just have a midweek snack in God's presence. And so I encourage you to go. And if you are here and um, media or production, that whole idea entices you, it captures your attention, then I want to encourage you to come on Wednesday nights because that's a great time to train, to help you develop. If you're a musician, that's a great time to do all that, okay? And so here we are in Proverbs, um, the fourth chapter, I believe, today. Um, Last week, we talked about, see, last year we did a survey, and the survey you guys answered that the one thing that you guys really wanted to know more of was finding God's will in your life, understanding what God's will is in your life. And so it was not clear. And so this last week and this week, it has has to do with with that type of thinking. So last week, we started in Proverbs, the 27th chapter, and we said that the direction that you're on right now, the direction is, is like a path. The choices that you make are like a path that puts you on a certain direction. But the direction that you're currently on determines your destination. If I go 10 west, that will not get me to Disney. It doesn't matter how much I pray, how much I fast, how much I say this. It doesn't matter. It will never take me. Why? Because that path is towards maybe the other Disney in California, maybe. (laughs) I don't know. But it won't take me there. But every decision is like a path with a predetermined result. And there's often a disconnect between the current path that you are on and the desired result that you want in the future. It's like, how did I wind up here? Well, you were on the path that got you there. You are where you are because of the choices that were made in the past. You don't understand. Other people made choices that affected me. True, but how you responded to the other choices people made is still your choice. Okay? And so we talked about that. It's a great message. I encourage you to do it. And we said, you win or lose by the paths that you choose. I think it was a fantastic message. I encourage you to get that. And so I'm going to stay in this vein because knowing God's will has a whole lot to do with your attention. Turn to your neighbor and say attention. Pay attention. What is it about attention? Attention influences the direction of your life. The things that capture your attention often influence our direction. As a matter of fact, the things that capture your attention often capture you. True. For instance, even, the, even today, people are now asking me because people are seeing it. Man, how did you just shed all these pounds? I've lost like 80, 90 pounds or so in the last year and a half. Well, I'm, I'm going to show you what I, I applied this principle right here. I didn't know I was doing that. But looking back, it's like, oh, man, this is what I was doing. Didn't even know it. And so, so we went to a men's tournament, a men's golf tournament. We had it a year and a half ago or so down at Starkey Park. And afterwards, I got a little frustrated. I was happy with all the, everything that took place, but I wasn't happy because I didn't, I, I'm, I like to win. I like to play, okay? <laughs> I'm just going to be frank about it. But I was telling myself, like, man, I'm going to learn this game. I'm going to figure this game out and learn how to play because I'm, I'm, I used to be an athlete or 
I am an athletic, you've seen me in all the newspapers and sports magazines all over the country, <laughs> right? But um, I used to play baseball a lot. And man, that ball would come 70, 80 miles an hour, 90 miles an hour. And I could hit it wherever I wanted to. I just had the, a, a gift or ability to do that. And so I'm thinking, man, if I could hit that ball while it's moving, wherever I wanted to, why can't I hit this crazy ball that's staying still? I can just tell it to go over here, but it doesn't pay attention to me. And so I wound up on this. It captured my attention, so I became consumed with playing this game. And so I'd look up on YouTube, and it's like, okay, Tiger hits 1,000 balls a day. So I went out there, grabbed some clubs. I got 1,000 balls out there, and by the time I got to 800, I was passing out. Man, I did all the wrong things because I had no clue what to do. I just kept playing, kept getting injured, going to the emergency room, messing up my straining, hitting the ground more than I hit the ball, and so forth. But what I found out is that while I was trying to figure this game out, there were certain movements in my body that I couldn't do because it requires a certain, you know, motions and stuff. And so I realized that I had to start moving and shifting and doing something so that I can get my body to move those directions. I took a, a, some... some, some uh, Golf lessons with a professional. He goes, can you do this? No. Nope. Can you do that? No. Nope. He goes, well, you got to start stretching. You got to start doing things in order to get to this place. I'm like, I got you. So I kept on doing that over and over again. Every single day, I made a, a, a range, a golf range in the back of my, heart, my house, 200. I got nine holes, a par three. And I, I'm a, I, have, a dick, I have a horrible addictive personality <laughs> disorder, okay? And so I'm like consumed with this. Like, I'm going to figure this out. Every single day, I'm hitting several hundred balls a day to figure this game out. As a matter of fact, this morning, I was up at 420 to get up. And I went out there and chipped another 50, 50 balls because I'm addicted. <laughs> but anyways, so I did that. And I realized that in moving and going to the course, I had to walk, and then I started shedding a pound here, shedding a pound there. And I loved, not shedding pounds, but I loved playing golf. And so I just kept on doing that. Little did I know that it was also helping the health of my body. Next thing you know, I'm dropping. And then it wasn't until recently, like the last three or four months, everything just started, sh like, really shedding. I'm like, man, I can't fix my pants. I'm like, what's happening here? And so, so that's how, because I came so focused on this thing, I, this thing captured my attention and I locked in and I, I had so many opportunities in the emergency room, all these other places, just stop doing that. Are you crazy? You can't do that. Because several years ago, I had back surgery. And back surgery, while we were doing an outreach there downtown Seguin, we had about 3,000 people there on Easter, and some little kid needed some snow cone, some ice for a snow cone machine, and I, he gave me the ice chest that didn't have any handles, so I picked it up, and a bone spur came, and 12 months later, they did surgery, and by that time, I got nerve damage. And so this whole thing comes into play, all right? So, but, but I realized that instead of not moving, I had to start moving. You want to lose weight? Move. Rest, fuel, and lift. Those four things right there. And so I just, it just became a part of my routine. Now, every day I'm doing this, and it's really helped me physically. It's helped me mentally. It's literally changed the direction or the destination of my future. I would be okay at 280 pounds, 300 pounds, eating my Twinkies and live my life fine. I'll be fine. But I realized, like, oh, man, I can do a whole lot more with this, and I'm more focused. There's more clarity. And so, so that's how I, I did this with this whole idea is just paying attention, things that captured my attention. The things that capture your attention often influence your direction. Isn't that the truth? And so it was a defining moment for me. Now, we've all had defining moments in our lives. A lot of them are for the good. There are things that we've done, people we've met that is like, man, it was better for us. But it's also a negative connotation to it also. How many of us know people that, that because we've, they captured our attention, there are people that we knew in the past that we wish we'd have never known before? Anybody ever been there? There's people that you, you, know, you, 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 you met and that captured your attention that just kind of took you on a different course. Or maybe as businessmen, there are opportunities that drew your attention to themselves. And because you bought into it, guess what happened? Man, you've wasted a whole lot of time and you spent all of your resources because something captured your attention. So here's my question. Whatever you pay attention to influences your direction. So what has, right now, what has the most of your attention? What's the thing that's consuming you 
right now and take a look at the difference or the results of, of you being so consumed in that, what are, what are some of the ramifications of, of that? It could be either good or bad. I don't know about you, but we have a problem in today's culture and society. The problem is this, is that everyone or a lot of people are diagnosed with something that's called attention deficit disorder. A-D-D. Isn't that the truth? Attention deficit disorder. Anybody remember this dog? Doug, the dog. Squirrel. That's a matter of fact, that's the title of this morning's message. Squirrel. <laughs> Draw your attention to the screen just to remind you who this guy is. Hi there. <gasps> Did that dog just say hi there? Oh, yes. My name is Doug. I have just met you, and I love you. <laughs> My master made me this collar. He is a good and smart master, and he made me this collar so that I may talk. Squirrel! I am not sure how I got up here. Oh! Ow! I smelled a flower! Oh, I smelled your pants! I smelled something horrible! Don't you roll in that! You just had a bath! This makes me very happy! It is like nothing I have ever smelled before! Must find the smell! Must find the smell! Doug! Doug! Get out of my azaleas! I digged them! Yeah, I can see that! And it's not digged, it's dug. Yes? You're missing my point. Point? I am dug. <laughs> Got it. Uh, I am arguing with a talking dog. Should I go under the fence? I shouldn't, but I must. I shouldn't, but I must. I shouldn't, but I must. I will not eat this food that someone did not give me. Oh, oh now I am feeling guilty. I ate a meat. <laughs> I love that. Man, can anybody identify? Anybody live with people like that? Well, many of us do. We see it. Oh, wait up, babe. I had no idea what ADD was or whatever. I went to a, my therapist a few years ago. I was up and watching him or seeing him because I've got some horrible problems. You know, every pastor is insecure. Anyways, besides that, he said, hey, have you ever taken a, a test for ADD? I was like, no, I don't even know. I said, I think my kids have it. And goes, but I've never taken it. I don't have that in Jesus' name. So he took the test. <laughs> he looked at me. He goes, he goes, have you never taken it? I said, no, sir. He goes, dude, you are off the charts on this test. I'm like, no way. Really? He goes, yeah. He goes, you, anyways, he diagnosed me with it. I was like, no, I'm healed in Jesus' name. Uh -uh, I don't have that stuff. <laughs> and so, so that's the problem. Digital overload. I mean, how many of us have been so distracted over this crazy phone Next thing you know, four hours later, we're still on YouTube. Or we're still on, you know, whatever, social media, Instagram, or whatever. Some of us just need to just wipe all that stuff off because it's drawing or it's capturing our attention and it's making us do and think stupid things. Just a simple thing like that can help you or hurt you. Isn't that the truth? Fast-paced lifestyles, instant gratification rather than self-control or discipline. Fast pace, you know, the pressures of life rather than rest, disciplining yourself, you know, loving Jesus, all that worship, all these things. Proverbs, the fourth chapter goes like this. Let your eyes look forward. Fix your gaze straight ahead. Carefully consider the path of your feet. In other words, man, stay focused here on the path that I have destined for you. That means that there's going to be things that are going to try to pull you away, things, people, stuff, all kinds of stuff's going to try, try to pull. All that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. If you want to pay attention to something, pay attention to your ear gate and your eye gate. Good. Those two things right there have an, a, an op open a door in your life. And there's an entrance there if you're not careful. It says, carefully consider the, the path of your, of your feet and all your ways will be established. Only if, after you pay attention and consider your path, you make the necessary adjustments. Then your ways will become established. Don't turn to the left. Don't turn to the right. Keep your feet away from evil. So one, lesson one is this. There are things that are trying to capture your attention. 
1980, 1979, 80, I'm 14 years old, minding my own business, walking down a sidewalk yeah. there in Seguin, Texas. It used to be uh, a swimming pool over there. Now it's a putting green, which I love. It's like I'm over there putting, chipping all the time. And then I reminded myself a few months ago, it's like, I remember this place. Because as I'm walking by, minding my own business, something caught, someone caught my attention. It was this little Hispanic, Bo Derek, my <laughs> wife. She came up out of the water and it was like, Hello. <laughs> like, I like her. I want her. She's mine. She's fine. She's everything. I, so I pursued her. It captured my attention, and it, and it took me in a direction, a different direction, a direction to her heart. So I started stalking her. <laughs> the things that capture your attention influence your direction, period. Isn't that the truth? And usually, listen to this, usually if things capture your attention, usually it's emotional. Right. Fortunately, it was good emotional and it was a good thing that helped me in, in my life. But a lot of times, instant gratification is constantly knocking at the door. Wherever your mind is and whatever your strong dominant thoughts are, guess what? The enemy will accommodate you to try to fill that void. I remember years ago, I hadn't smoked pot. I used to be a drug addict, blah, 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 all that crazy stuff. And after I got saved, I'd stopped doing all that stuff for years. Got out of Bible school. Natalie and I were at the house. We were building our new house. For whatever reason, I confessed to her. I was like, babe, I don't know whatever reason. I have no reason to think this way or feel this way, but I feel like smoking pot. She goes, what? I was like, I know that's stupid because we used to have, I didn't smoke joints. I had bags. In my, in, yeah, we just take buds out. Anyways, I'm not going to glorify the devil. I'm just saying, for whatever reason, I had a craving for it. As a matter of fact, and while I was in Bible school, at, at a, I was in an emergency restroom, uh, restru uh, restaurant, uh, an emergency room at the, at the hospital. I used to work there as a janitor. And that craving had been going on for almost a year. But I've never bought into it. And I'm cleaning trash out, and I picked up a whole bag of dope while I'm cleaning the trash out. I'm like, no way. Are you it's this pot. I just flushed it down the toilet. We graduate, come home. We're, by, we're, we're at the house, in the backyard of my house. I've got six acres out there, and I'm still thinking about this pot stuff. Sure enough, the wind starts blowing. Probably from here to the parking lot, I see this thing rolling. It's a piece of plastic. And I'm sitting there, and it's rolling, and it's coming. It comes right to my foot. No joke. It's not a preacher's joke. It comes, it's a bag of dope. I'm like, are you kidding me? Man, Jesus, thank you, Lord. No, the wind, the Holy Spirit. The, no, pay attention, right? So immediately I'm like, are you kidding me? This is crazy. I had a decision to make. Well, I got rid of that stuff because that's not the direction I wanted to go. I knew where it would take me if I bought into it. David says the same thing, you know, because sometimes if you're captured by a distraction, it could lead you to destruction Good. easily, very easily if you buy into it. Sometimes it's too light. It's like, oh, man. You know the common, the, the, the common uh, wording that a person uh, who gets exposed and gets exposed publicly, you know what the common wording they say? What I hear over and over again, I never thought it would happen to me. I'm not thinking about that. Pastors, ministers, people in leadership, you know, Organized, what, they never thought it would happen to them, but they gave in to that moment. And then all of a sudden, it was exposed. David should have been in war, and rather than, than going to war, he stayed at home. And while he was at home, he goes and takes a little break uh, and goes on his rooftop, and he sees a gal on the, another rooftop taking a shower that captured his attention. And he wound up committing murder on their behalf. Later on, David um, wrote about it. And this is what he wrote in Psalms 119. He goes, God, direct me in the path of your com commands. For there I find delight. Turn my eyes away from worthless things. I've been there before, done that before. He goes, and preserve my life. Don't let me be captured by distractions according to your word. I love that. So we can see that. You know, right now there are some of us who are parenting our children. And as parents, we live with a concern that at some time or another, something or someone 
has the potential to entice our children, to grab our children's and capture our children's intention that could lure, lure them, lure, that could lead them into a path that's destructive for their lives, yeah. right? I mean, we're all, we have that concern. As a matter of fact, I woke up this morning thinking I needed to apologize to the parents of my grandkids' uh, soccer mom, soccer parents, because we went over there to go see them yesterday. And uh, we're playing soccer and stuff. I got two grandsons, one of three and five. They're on two different teams. And while we were there with the young one, the older one had another team, I mean, had his team, his game, to start playing. But Bianca, my daughter, and the son-in-law, they were, they were coaching that team. He goes, hey, Dad, can you take Elias over there? I'm like, sure. I went over there, and I'm, I'm taking Elias over there. We got all our gear on. And I used to be a coach, so I get it. But it's been, you know, it's, I'm out of retirement. I didn't get out of retirement. I'm, I'm retired from all that stuff. <laughs> And so I'm sitting there, and I'm watching these little kids kicking everywhere and messing around, picking their boogers and stuff. And I'm like, where's the coach at? He says, there's no coach there. I'm like, what's wrong with these? Where, what are they going to do? They're bored right there. So immediately, instinct is like, hey, let's make a circle right now. Let's go. So the kids were like, who is this? And so they got in a circle, started throwing balls. I started making, you know, they were just running back and forth. I was doing drills. I didn't even know what I was doing. I don't know how to play soccer. But I just knew that if they run and kick it, we're going to win. We're going we're gonna to fire. I'm going to fire them up. And so the kids were all happy. And the, the, the dads of the, of the kids, they were like, yeah, yeah. You know, so they came and started helping me and stuff. And so finally one of the kids came up to me and goes, uh, coach, coach. Now I'm their coach. Says, coach. <laughs> Uh, uh, we're thirsty. He goes, we need to. I was like, oh, shoot. He goes, I've been running the heck out of them. This is not even a game. And so he goes, oh, yeah, that's right. Go take a break. And so these other men, the dads are like, man, I like you. He goes, can you be our coach next week? He's like, I don't know. He goes, I'm no grandpa. Goes, I'm going to just come out. Of, he goes, no, you're the goat, dude. You just got out of retirement. You got to come back. And so I, I was sitting there with the, with the kids in there. He's like, what's the name of y'all's, what's the name of y'all's team? It's Thunder. Because thunder, we're the thunder. It's like, immediately, I, my, my ADD mind is like, I got my Spotify game, uh, phone out, and I thought of the song that had thunder in it, which is ACDC, Thunder. <laughs> like, da na 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 thunder. Dun. So I started playing it, and then I started seeing my grandson. It's like, yeah, thunder. And then all the kids are joining, thunder. Dun. And then the parents like, oh, my gosh, now. But I started thinking, it's like, man, parents, poor parents. I got to go back and apologize. One, they knew I was a pastor. <laughs> Two, I'm teaching their kids how to play ACDC Thunder. <laughs> Anyways, I told them next week I'm going to bring my speaker. I'm going to blast that thing. It's gonna have, we're going to have fun doing it. But there are some things that just will capture your attention, and if you're not careful, man, it will bite you in the rear. Isn't that the truth? So watch this. Not only are there things that are trying to capture your attention, there are also things that you need to give attention to. Usually the things that are trying to capture your attention are emotional. Immediate gratification. It, 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 it um, entices the senses. What you feel, what you see, what you taste, all that stuff just pulls you. It pulls on you. And we begin to make decisions. But the things that you're giving attention to or paying attention where you're in control, that's intentional. One's emotional, one's intentional. You want to live your life with intentionality. You, want, you don't want your finances to tell you what to do. You want to control your finances and tell it what to do. Same thing in all of your life. There's, there's one thing, love never allows anything to master itself. If you want to walk in love, you want to walk against with, with a golden rule and, and, and love be that rule, you can just live your whole life based upon these, this idea. Love never hurts itself. Love never hurts others, and no, love never lets anything master itself. That's good. So if you want to walk in God's will, just pay attention to the, your love walk. And so, so these things, need to, you need to pay attention to certain things. Proverbs, the fourth chapter says, carefully consider the path for your feet, and all your ways will be established. Don't turn to the right or to the left. What's the benefit of my life living with such intentionality and focus? Thank you for asking. Proverbs 4, a little bit right before that passage that we're looking at, notice what it says. It says, give attention to what? His words. Man, there are a lot of voices out there. The voices that are try, trying to entice you, trying to pull you certain ways. People commenting, people saying things on 
Instagram or Facebook that just rub you the wrong way, attitudes, all kinds of stuff. It goes, pay it. So all of a sudden, it captures your attention, and you're like that fire person. Like, I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. Or you don't let those things capture your attention. You control yourself and use discipline, right? And you give attention to his words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Don't let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the middle of your heart. Why? They are life to those who find them and health. What are the benefits of living your life and conducting your well, your life in such a way that you're focused, that you are paying attention to the right things? Life and health. Currently, there are things right now that have your attention. Is it producing life? Is it producing health? Or is it bringing destruction into your life? Because when we pay attention to the right things, the byproduct of being in, walking in righteousness is life and health. I'm not saying trials won't come, but you can be in the middle of all kinds of chaos and still have peace inside. Right? You can control that by the Spirit of God. So, so marriage is never good if it's on autopilot. It doesn't work. I tried it. It doesn't work. I <clears throat> already married her. She's got the ring. I'm good. The rest of our life, no, it's not going to work. It's not, it's not going to work, right, babe? Your uh, health doesn't work well on autopilot. All of a sudden, the autopilot to resist, water size it. <laughs> that becomes your pattern now. Let me have two tacos of arraco with two bowls of menudo, please. Yeah. Uh, your faith, your faith needs attention in order for it to get strong. Isn't that the truth? So there are things that are capturing your attention, but there are many more things that we need to give our attention to. And when we pay attention to the right things, our life will be better for it. As a matter of fact, fill in this blank. Just take a picture of this and fill this blank in yourself and then get to the person that loves you the most and ask him to fill it in for you. If I give more attention to this, my life would go in a different direction. Or if I keep paying attention to this, my life will get in a worse direction. If I don't learn how to take care and budget my money, the direction, the predetermined destination is not where you want to be. You don't want to be bankrupt. You don't want to go through bankruptcy. You don't want to go through these things where you're just trying to figure out how are things going to work in life. Natalie and I, we have a limited amount of income, but we said years ago, hey, we got to take care of this business here. We might not have all the stuff, but we're not going to be scraping and we're not going to be, you know, looking to others to meet our needs. He's our provider. He'll take care of us, and he always has. He always will. Some of the craziest stories I can tell you about God's provision in our lives. Simply because we decided to pay attention to the principle of giving and receiving. That's right. Generosity. Living our lives with open-handedness. I told Daddy years ago, I was like, babe, I, can't even, I don't have enough to pay my bills. Let's just give it away anyways. So we kept sowing and sowing and sowing and sowing seed. And God has done supernatural things over and over and over again. What does Jesus say about this? Thank you for asking. Matthew, the sixth chapter, Jesus says a whole lot about what your focus is on. Notice what he says. He goes, your eye is the lamp of the body. And where the eye wanders, where your attention goes, so goes the rest of you. If your eyes are good, then your whole body is going to be full of light. But if you're paying attention to the right things, the rest of you are going to follow. It's just a, a paraphrase of what I'm looking at. Listen, the eye of the, of the lamp is the body. Your life currently and in the future will flow in the direction of what you're paying attention to. It'll, it'll flow in the direction of your most dominant thought. If your dominant thought is kindness and mercy and the spirit of God and truth and that's, how, that's what's going to happen in your life. You're going to have a free conscious. You're going to have a strong mind. You're going to be in a better place. But if your mind is just full of, of lust and trying to get over and trying to take advantage and how can I get one up here and one up here and how can I be better at this? How can I get a better car? If, if it's all on stuff. And there are some things, there's nothing wrong with stuff, but sometimes we're trading good for something that's better, something that's stronger. Nothing wrong with playing golf, but if I let it, 
man, but if I keep doing it, I'll, I'll make millions with one putt. No, I'm just kidding. But there's some things, right? Jesus said, the eye is the lamp of the body. But where your eye wanders, there your life will go. I said this last week, and I just want to just rethink this real quick. But in Hebrews, the second chapter, one of the dangers in living your life in a, in a lifestyle that, that honors the Lord is, is this idea called drifting. Notice what it says in Hebrews 2. It says, we have to pay more careful attention, therefore, to what we hear so that we don't drift away. People don't intend to embrace things that lead them down destructive paths. They drift there. Um, when you're on the beach and you got all of your stuff with all your kids and all your umbrella and it's beautiful and then you go out to the beach, next thing you know, you look back at 45 minutes later and everything's been stolen. But it's not stolen. You drifted. You just drifted. You got to get back on track or take a long walk and get back to your stuff, right? And so it is in life. We tend to drift if we're not careful. One compromise here, one no when we should have said yes, one yes when we should have said no. Little by little, shortcuts. That's exactly what the enemy tried to entice Jesus with. Hey, take a shortcut. We know you're the son of God. Angels can pick you up. Throw yourself off. Of There's just shortcuts. And he says, no, I'm not about that. I'm about his word. I'm about worshiping God and him only. And he took the path, not of least resistance, he took the path with a determined destination, which is our redemption. This is why we have the freedom that we have today is because Jesus decided to pay attention to the mission and fulfill that all of his life. And I'm so thankful he did that. Amen. He is such a good God. I was talking to Pastor Joel. It's like, hey, I was through this outline out there before I processed more of it and I said, hey, tell me what you think. And immediately, two minutes later, he gives me this text and I'm just going to read it to you. It says, quit ignoring stuff. <laughs> it sounds just like him. It says, why do we ignore stuff? In other words, when we focus on what we're paying attention to, we recognize what it is. Why do we ignore it? Why do we keep on doing the same things? Well, a lot of reasons, but three of them he mentioned. He goes, maybe it's too painful. Could be too painful. Or it could be that it hurts our egos. We don't want to be considered wrong, especially not to our spouses. Hey, I touched the nerve there, didn't I? Men, let me just tell you, you're more wrong than you are right. I've learned that. I just say, okay, babe, yes, babe. Okay, sweetie, you're right. I know she's wrong, but she, okay, you're right. I just want peace, that's all. And that's, that's another trouble. For the sake of just wanting peace, you don't address it. You don't make the course corrections. Because like, oh, man, that didn't involve. That's what that last one is. It seems like there's so much work to do. It's like, why start? Why start? Let's just, we're going to be okay right here. We might be in debt, but we'll be all right. No, address the mess, right? right. And what do they call people who constantly ignore stuff? Ignorance. Ignorance. That's what they call it. Willful blindness. That's what Jordan Peterson says. Willful blindness. And, and, and you don't want to know. Don't tell me anything. I don't want to know because if I, I know, then I have to do something about it. So they just like, just keep me out of the loop. So I, I know it's a simple principle. Attention has a tendency to influence your direction. But man, I'm telling you, if we apply something as simple as this, I had no idea that my destination would change as I began to hit this stupid little ball. But it was in, it was in alignment. God didn't tell me, don't play golf. And he didn't say, go play golf. I just wanted to do something. And I started doing it. Next thing I know, it had a domino effect. And it's still having a domino effect. And I'm realizing now that the reason I'm happy today is because now I get to think about my future. I want to spend years on this earth, one, helping raise up my grandkids and my, my great-grandkids, in a way that honors the Lord and be, be a, you know, an example to them, and which is, which is beautiful to me. And I get to do this while I live long on this earth. While I kept going the route that I was going, I might have not been here another three, five years or so or less. <clears throat> I want to continue to do what I'm doing 
I want to continue to make it hard for people to go to hell in Seguin. And that all started because of a little game of golf. And it had some ramifications. And I got so focused and so just consumed with it that it had these results. Now I have to be careful now. I told Natalie the other day, I said, like, babe, I got to stop playing golf for just a month. She goes, well, why don't you do it? I was like, I'm addicted. <laughs> because it's hard for me to stop something that's been working, right? And so, so I just keep rolling with it, but I have to also be wise and not let it go to the extreme. So what are you paying attention to? So this is, this is, it's hard to look back. It's hard to look in the mirror and, and, and focus on this. So I really want you to take a picture of these next two slides. Take them home and just, just meditate on this. Answer them by yourself. But what has captured your attention from which you need to free yourself from? Some of us are in a place where we abound. We feel bound. We feel strapped. We feel tied to something that we need to be loosed from. Because what is it that you're, uh, uh, captured your attention that, that you need to free yourself? What is it that has captured your attention that has negative implications in your marriage or in your home or in your business, in your life right now? What is it that's creating a stronger and stronger emotional draw? Remember? Things that capture your attention emotionally, it's an emotional draw. That guy that keeps winking his eye at you at the, at the office, you like that. Why? Because you're not getting attention at home and so that emotionally is enticing. It's drawing you in, and you're starting to like it. Or, sir, you're starting to like it. Oh, she's, she, she recognized it. I noticed her, and so forth. What is it that's trying to draw a stronger emotional draw? What are you focused on? What's captured you that it's an emotional draw is taking place? What's luring you down a path you've always warned other people against? Is there anything there? If there is, the Spirit of God's not there to shame you, condemn you. He's there to make course corrections, to heal you, to restore you, to make it better in your life. Amen. God's for us. He's not against us. And he has great and wonderful, fun, great, fantastic things to do while we're here on this earth. The second slide is this. Not only is there something you have to warn yourself against capturing it, but there's some things that you have to give attention to. What do you need to give attention, more attention to? Finances, family, your wife, your children, your grandchildren, your work. I don't know what that is. You know what that is. Who do you need to give and pay more attention to? Usually, that's someone in your own home. Mom, dad, wife, son. As a parent, you know, I raised three girls and, and, a, son, and a grandson. And if there's anything that I could coach you on regarding raising children, that you have to pay attention to, pay close attention to, is not the stuff that they're doing or not doing. It's the distance that takes place between your heart and their heart. If you see the gap increasing, pay attention to that. In other words, when I walk home, walk into the doors, my daughters would go to their bedrooms, and then my, my wife would go to the kitchen. And I'm like, what am I? What's going on here? I had nothing. What's wrong with y'all? Nothing's wrong with them. It was all me. And the attitude, I was so tired that all I saw were the worst things when I got home. All it was was a simple 60-second, 120-second adjustment. The Lord showed me. This is your answer, Marcus. He goes, when you go home, on the way home from your work, that is the beginning of your day. Yeah. And so that first one minute, two minute, lift up, encourage, build up, edify, walk into their world. That made all of a sudden the distance, the gap between their heart and my heart started shrinking. And where they could embrace daddy, they could talk to daddy. There are times that they couldn't. And, you know, some, sometimes I did stuff, sometimes they did stuff. But still, that's the thing I would pay more attention to. And if you want them to fail or if they want to fail or if they want to make crazy decisions, let them make them while they're at home, while your guys are at home, while they're being raised in the house. Because then you can do course corrections while you're there. Once they're out of the house, man, they're on their own. Make sense? Who do you give more attention to? Who do you need to give more attention to? And where do you need to be more intentional? Pay attention to what is trying to capture your attention. Why? Because it may determine the direction of your whole future, your whole destination. 
Did you get something out of that? Yeah. Hebrews the 11th chapter says that we are running a race. And it says that he's the author and finisher of our faith. And when we run this race, we have to run it with focus. We have to focus and, have, and pay attention to Jesus. It says, keep your eyes on him, the author and finisher of our faith. I mean, keep your eyes focused on him. He will direct your path. He will show you what's next in life. I just believe that. He's done it in my life. He'll do it in your life. He's no respecter of persons. Amen. Father, you're so good to us. We thank you for the word of God. We thank you, Lord God, that we can look to you, that these little manners here, Lord God, it might seem small and minute, but Lord, they make major, major differences in our lives. So I pray as we challenge ourselves, as we read uh, and meditate upon these questions, Lord God, that, that light would come and that grace would also come with that light so we can change what we're doing. We thank you for it. We trust you. We thank you for great freedom in our families. In Jesus' name. And everyone that agreed with that said amen. We absolutely love you guys. We'll see you either on Recharge Wednesday night or we'll see you next Sunday. If you are ever in the Seguin area, come visit us on Sunday mornings at 9 or 11 a.m. Or you can just download our app and receive our weekly messages right to your phone. Just text CC Seguin to 77977 and click on the link that you receive. May the remainder of your week be enriched with God's favor and blessings.